And what do you know? A game is about to break out. Mike Holmgren, who guided Green Bay to a Super Bowl championship, lost in another appearance. Bill Cower, second time to the Super Bowl, lost to Dallas 10 years ago. And that is Jeff Reed, who will put it in the air for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Josh Scoby will run it back. There is Scoby. I talked a few minutes ago about the fact that Seattle fumbled the opening kickoff first play of the game in Jacksonville back in September. But Scoby has been a good kickoff returner all season long. You know, and that's one of the areas that there hasn't been a lot of talk about in this Super Bowl matchup. But if you say who has the advantage in special teams, I think it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers have started hot in their last two games at Indianapolis and at Denver. Beat Cincinnati before that and Super Bowl 40 underway in Detroit. The kick goes to the three yard line. Josh Scobie out of Kansas State brings it back out to the 18 yard line. Clint Crewalt makes the tackle and here comes Hasselbeck. Originally a Green Bay Packer when Holmgren was there, then came over to Seattle now in his fifth season as a starter. He's been great in postseason, as you can see, with three touchdowns, no picks, and a rating of over 109. And he was saying the, the biggest thing here offensively for the, for the Seattle Seahawks is going to be how they handle the pressure defense of the Steelers and we're going to find that out early. Open up in the eye. You saw Troy Palomano will keep an eye on his ankle which was tender early in the week and the first play is a pass to Darrell Jackson. Walter Jones, Florida State. Steve Hutchinson, Michigan. Robbie Kobach, Wazoo. Chris Gray, Auburn University. Sean Locklear, Robert County. And the man who just introduced himself as D Jack has made another catch of the first two plays of the game are passes to Jackson. And that's one of the things that the Seattle Seahawks really do is play up-tempo football. It's not no huddle, but it's a very quick huddle. And that's how they've begun. And after two passes, it's Alexander, the league MVP and a rushing champ, tripped up by Palomalo, but not before he picks up eight behind a Sean Locklear block, second and two. There's Mike Holmgren. He's one of the, the head coaches in this league that does call his own plays. Gil Haskell is the offensive coordinator. And then he kind of makes up the blank game plan and gives it to Mike Holmgren. And Mike Holmgren is a great play caller. Second and two from the 38-yard line. Quick three-step drop and a pass again to Jackson, who missed nine games during the middle of the season with knee surgery. Then they kept him out of the final game of the year. But he made a couple of very key catches thus far in the playoffs. Well, you know, Ike Taylor is playing off of Daryl Jackson here. And as long as he gives them that big a cushion, the Seahawks are just going to take it. I mean, they're going to come up and hit that quick out right in front of them and pick up six and seven yards. And until Ike Taylor gets up a little tighter or they, they change to a rotation to that side like they are now, they'll do that all day. Jackson out after a minute and a half and three catches, and there goes Alexander around the left side, which is the dominant side of the Seattle offense with two great linemen, of course, in Jones and Hutchinson, much talked about in the preamble to this game. And Alexander picks up about a yard and a half here. Yeah, we can see their plan here is they want to stay in two backs most of the time and and and, and they want to throw the ball to to loosen up this Steeler defense. But when they do run, they're not going to run inside. They're running the edges. And they have two backs here. And here's Max Strong. The fullback is up here as a slot now. Second down and nine. Jackson comes back into the game. Sixth play of the opening drive. Hasselback throws and the pass is too high with Morris and Max Strong. They stay in the block and there's a sack but a penalty. That's Clark Hagens who got there. But we'll see about the call. Bill Levy is the referee. Yeah, with Clark Hagens on one side, Joey Porter on the other side, you really can't give them that edge. And the Seahawks know that, too. But you see, here's, here's the edge I'm talking about. It's right here and right here. You know, with, with no tight end there, then, then they just get that free run at your quarterback. And then he has to step up, and then they get to push in the middle, and the guy that enjoys it most is a quarterback of the defense that just got the sack. Seattle to punt, Tom Ruin, who has two Super Bowl rings as a former member of the Denver Broncos to put it in the air. Antoine Randall is back to receive it. 
And the kick goes into the end zone. Dinner's not... The Pittsburgh Steelers, their 45 active guys tonight. None has ever played in a Super Bowl. From the 20-yard line, Ben Roethlisberger, second year out of Miami of Ohio, led him to a 15-1 mark last year. And right off the bat, you've got Bryce Fisher coming across the line, and he was induced. False start. False start. Number 83, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Tight end Keith Miller, who could be a key factor before this one is done. And, you know, Bill Cowher said that they were going to be able to use some some quick count, and they, you know they've played three road games in the playoffs, and this game in the Super Bowl, you know, should be more of a neutral crowd. But if you look or listen to this crowd, believe me, this is a Pittsburgh Steeler crowd. About 80 percent, I would estimate. First and 15, and this is really Parker. Taken down at the line of scrimmage by the rookie linebacker Leroy Hill. Last year, Tommy Maddox got hurt early, so they went to the rookie, did a tremendous job, and really came of age this season, despite missing some time because of arthroscopic knee surgery. And in postseason, he has been just tremendous with seven touchdowns and one interception. Double tight end set here on second down and 15 from the 15-yard line. Look at how deep the middle linebacker Lofa Tutupu is. They set up the screen to Parker, and Parker runs into Fanica, ran into his own man, and that's a gain of one. It'll be third down and 14. Willie Parker making the catch. He is their lead running back. Bettis is their short yardage guy. Veron Haynes on third down. You know, Al, I was talking about Lofa Tutupu, and you see how, how deep he is. But, but the big thing about being that deep, when he sees something, he can run up and hit that thing upfield. And he can meet it right at the line of scrimmage. So you look at him and say, geez, he's lined up too deep. And then whenever the ball gets to the line of scrimmage, Tatupa's right there. Son of Mosi Tatupa, who played in the Super Bowl 20 years ago. Haynes is in the backfield, flanking Roethlisberger out of the shotgun. And a second penalty on this drive, and that'll be a second false start. False start. Number 78 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Max Starks. You know, and that's that's what I was saying. You know, it's kind of a Pittsburgh Steeler crowd, so you wouldn't expect that on the Steelers to have have two early penalties like this. Mosey right there. Oh yeah, great special teamer. Played with New England in the Super Bowl 20 against Chicago. Still lives in New England. Lofa grew up in New England. Started his college career at Maine, and then wound up going to USC. Third and 19 from the gun. Seattle has a three man rush here. Roethlisberger able to get away and then a slide to a stop at the 21 yard line. Tatupo is there to make sure. And Pittsburgh will have to punt after a three and out, including two false starts. Yeah, you always look at that three man rush and you say, these are not going to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. But the pressure on the quarterback becomes that. Okay, you only have three guys rushing, but you have eight defending, so you have to throw into eight-man coverage. And in today's quick throw football, that's very difficult. Chris gardaki has been in the league 15 years, has never had a punt block. Peter Warwick will run it back for the Seahawks. And the left footer with a low kick, fielded at the 38. And taken down right there. James Harrison making the tackle. John, only 108 balls for use tonight, in addition to the kicking balls. Isn't that something? And they're going to change the ball on every play in the first half, and that's to get these footballs into the game. And when we talked to Matt Hasselbeck the other day, that was his biggest concern. He said every quarterback that he talked to said watch out for the the balls in the Super Bowl because they're all new and you get a new one on every play and a new ball is usually a slick ball. Roethlisberger is not worried about it. He's wearing the glove. Hasselbeck meanwhile with some completions on their first drive and there's a little toss back to the fullback Max Strong and he gets tripped up by Kimo 
Von Olhoffen. They use a 3-4 with Von Olhoffen and Aaron Smith outside. And the big man at 325 pounds, number 98, Casey Hampton filling up the middle. You know, and that's where it all starts. I think you, know, you talk about you know the linebackers on this defense. You talk about Troy Palomalo. But it's those front three guys that play like three defensive tackles that get everything started in the run game. Second down and ten. Secondary does its job, and now Matt's going to take off, and he's going to slide the hole probably a little short of the first down. They will mark it just short of the 45-yard line, setting up third and short. You know, Kimo Von Olhoffen has a heck of a club. We talked to Walter Jones the other day. The big thing that he was worried about was that club. You see it right there, the left end, and, and he said, I just have to keep my hips low and keep my balance because if this guy catches you off balance, he just launches you. Third and one, Alexander 16 for 16 on third and one during the regular season. They fake it to him, and the pass is caught by Jackson, and Darrell Jackson is to the 45-yard line. Tackle there by Ike Taylor, and Jackson's already caught four passes for 30 yards. You know, one of the things that, that Seattle wants to do, if they have to use a, a, a running back as a blocker, what they do is they, is they want Max Strong to be the guy. So, so they're always going to play with two backs, and it's going to be either an eye or it's going to be offset. They really don't want Sean Alexander to be the pass protector. Pittsburgh rotating its defensive line here, first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Hasselbeck's going to set up a screen, and then Alexander juggled it. And that was the end of that play, but Kiesel is there to make the tackle number 99. Yeah, I think that's kind of a key, Al. Anytime you see Sean Alexander in there as a single back, it's probably going to be a screen. Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator of the Steelers, he's going to attack your protection. So when he sees a single back, he knows that he can make that back block and pass protection. They're going to try and do that to Alexander. And then Mike Holmgren, on the other hand, is going to say, OK, you do that. I want to screen to that side. LeBeau is behind Cower. One time Detroit Lion back off the play fake. It's caught out in the flat by Bobby Ingram. He makes his first catch of the night. And the ball is at the 41-yard line where Ike Taylor makes the tackle. It'll be third down and six. You know, Matt Hasselbeck, you know, is a big guy, six foot four, and you don't think of those guys as being scramblers, but he's very good at that. He's, he, he's very good at this type of thing, keeping a play alive. You know, just moving a little. Four receivers here, including D.J. Hackett in the game for the first time with a ton of speed on third down and six. The pass is caught. There is a flag. That would be Jackson's fifth catch, but we'll see about the call from Levy. That was a third down and six. Holding Number 62 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Back that comes on a hole by Chris Gray, the 13th-year guard out of Auburn. It's going to be against James Ferrier. He's going to he's going to come in to say, "Here's Chris Gray right here." You see, he starts to the outside and he just gets his arm right around Ferrier's neck. Watch him. He's right there. Then he gets that right arm around his neck and puts the old chokehold on him. And so with a little bit more than six minutes to go in a scoreless opening quarter, the Seahawks backed up. Third down, 16 at their own 49-yard line. And the Steelers are in an interesting defense, and this is when they get their exotic defenses. Two defensive linemen, three linebackers, six defensive backs. They rush three. Hasselback guns it downfield and nearly has it picked off by Ike Taylor. Had it in his hands. Could make the interception. In comes the punting unit. Yeah, and those are the things we were talking about earlier. Again, it was a it was a three-man rush, and the good news is is you, you don't get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. The bad news is you're throwing into a lot of white jerseys. Eight. A lot of jewelry in the Tom Ruin household. Married to Amy Van Dyke, and has won a few golds as a an Olympic swimmer. Rune, who started the season with Carolina, winds up coming back to Seattle. And that kick will wind up in the end zone. You know, centers are, are sneaky guys. Watch Von Olhoffen is working here. He tries to get his club, but watch Robbie Tobeck right there. Once Von Olhoffen says, they love to sneak out 
and get that guy that's not looking. And it will always be the center that does that. Toback who's played in the Super Bowl before as an Atlanta Falcon. Second down and 10 now for the Pittsburgh Steelers from the 20 yard line. And this is Parker. In the offseason, then Ray Rhodes, a defensive coordinator, suffered a stroke earlier in the year. John Marshall has pretty much taken over the role as defensive coordinator in the pass intended for Heinz Ward. No good. Incomplete. And it's a three and out for Pittsburgh. Yeah, the Steelers were in their dime defense. They had six defensive backs in there, making it tough for Roethlisberger to throw. You know, if you look at you know his games in the playoffs, Ben Roethlisberger, he had the most success when he was able to throw on first and second down. And to me, both these teams look a little tight, don't they? I don't know if it's yeah. that or maybe they start to get going and they get the penalty, but it's one of those two things. Especially early. after the way Pittsburgh started in each of his last two games against Indianapolis and Denver. A little powering tonight. Bardaki's kick field at 37 yard line. Warwick comes to the outside. And Warwick will take it back to close to midfield of the 49 yard line. So good field position. You look at that Pittsburgh defense with Paul Amalo and and Porter. It's kind of like going to a movie. You have 11 actors, but two of them would be like Jack Nicholson and Robert De Niro. You always know when they're in the scene. And this is Alexander across the 50 to the 47 yard line for right, a four. And you listen to Troy Palomalo and you know he really sounds like a gentle guy and, and off the field he is. I mean he's he's really and, but he gets on field and he's a totally different guy. I mean this guy is all over the place. I mean he'll launch himself at everything and Dick LeBeau says a great player as a safety the thing you're always looking for is a guy that can sack the quarterback and intercept the ball deep. Well, you that's Troy Palomalo. You talk to the Seahawks this week, they describe him as a missile, and that's what he is. Lines up all over the field, come from any angle. Second down and six, and that's a fifth catch for Jackson, who's inside the 30, takes it to the 28, tying Andre Reid's record for most catches in the first quarter of a Super Bowl with five. And what they did is they caught him in that cover two. You're going to see both safeties are deep. Jackson just gets inside the corner and trips on one side. And remember we were talking to Matt Hasselbeck yesterday, and he said, you know, who do you think will have a big game? He had a smile. So I was just talking to Daryl Jack. I think he's going to have a big day. Play fake. Lots of time. Goes the other way, and that is hauled in for a first down by Joe Jurevicius, who's playing in his third Super Bowl once as a giant once as a Buccaneer and now as a Seahawk and that's a heck of a throw by Matt Hasselbeck that was his third read but it all starts with good pass protection you know when they bring their pressure they bring those outside linebackers like Hagan's has come if you get them blocked then you can throw the ball on this defense getting a block is a tough thing the Seahawks just did it there and the Seahawks beginning to open the game up a little bit talking about the slow pace at the beginning like a fight where there's nothing but jabs and now Hasselbeck moves to his left throws caught touchdown but here comes a flag it's Darrell Jackson who makes the catch and the flag thrown at the end of the play and that's what I was saying Matt Hasselbeck does so well there's going to be a penalty here but he'll start to scramble but he doesn't run he just keeps looking upfield and finds that open that's guy number 82 Wipe it out. Yeah, it's something that Matt Hasselbeck saw all the way because he started running down there. Here's Jackson. He's going to start outside. Then he's coming on the end right there. And then and then he feels the scramble. So he goes into a scramble drill and he put that right hand up there. You know, when you think of push offs, that's not the kind you think about, really. He pushed Chris Pope away. So two big penalties have cost Seattle two big plays in the first quarter, which is two minutes to go. And the problem with Jackson on that play was right in front of the official, but again, he was finished running his pattern. He was going into scramble drill. First and 20 now from the 26-yard line. Alexander on a stretch play to the right. And Pittsburgh is there on the outside. 
to knock him down after a gain of a couple. Back we go to Jackson again. And you see again, he's running the pattern here. His pattern is an in. Now he sees and feels Hasselbeck scramble, so he goes to scramble drill. You just keep moving, find an opening for him, but in doing so, and look, it's right in front of the official. He pushed off with his right hand. Mm -hmm. Jackson has all four of Seattle's first downs. Second and 19, they're going to give it to Alexander. He's going to pick and thread, but not go anywhere because it's stopped on the outside by Larry Foote, a Detroiter coming home to play in his hometown. He's the first guy to stop him. What they do, these Seattle Seahawks, we talked about how they really don't feel they can run inside. They have to run outside, but the tough thing about going outside is that they really handle the edge as well and make you cut back. And then when you cut back, they, they're, 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 they're speed and their pursuit is excellent. Third down. 23. Have to get it to the six yard line to convert. And Hasselbeck's going for six. It is tipped up in the air and incomplete. Intended for the speedy D.J. Hackett. The number four wide out and Bryant McFadden, a rookie out of Florida State, is there for the coverage. Yeah, I think that was the, the matchup they were looking for is to get their speed. D.J. Hackett on the rookie McFadden. But that ball stays up there a little too long. In fact, McFadden made such a, such a good read on it. He was really by it and a little late. Hackett had a chance to catch that thing. Now a 47 yard field goal attempt for Josh Brown. In perfect indoor conditions right down the middle. <laughs> Detroit. Done a great job hosting. Super Bowl 40. It's the second time that Detroit has hosted a Super Bowl. John Madden did his first game at the Silver Dome when San Francisco beat Cincinnati back in 81. You're right. That was that was my first Super Bowl, the first Super Bowl here, and that was a great game. And that was, you know, Bill Walsh's first Super Bowl win, 49ers, Joe Montana. That was kind of the start of that 49er dynasty. First of five. They've won five, and Dallas has won five. And now Pittsburgh would be a five time winner if they win. And of course, for Seattle, everybody who follows the game knows first time ever in the Super Bowl. Brown, who just kicked a 47 yard field goal. With the kickoff, it's taken a yard into the end zone by Ricardo Coakley. And yeah, when we went to uh, practice the other day, Palomalo on Thursday didn't practice. And that was a little shocking when you know, he couldn't do anything. But uh, you know, Bill Coward. Said they took an X-ray. There was no problem. And he'll be fine today. Roethlisberger throws and that pass is incomplete. It would have been about a six-yard gain. Cedric Wilson dropping it. Came over from the 49ers and played a key role in the playoffs as their number three receiver. As Roethlisberger checks the band. Lofa Tutupo may have had something to do with his dropping it. This guy is is amazing as a rookie. You know, I saw him in training camp. I thought you know he's pretty good. Saw him regular season. I said. You know, he's good. Watched him at the end of the season. I said, this guy's a dominant player. He's a great player. Reminds me of Mike Singletary a lot. Roethlisberger, who is one out of three for one yard, going over the middle into double coverage, and that's incomplete. Jordan Babineau helps to break it up, and then a flag comes in. I wonder if that's going to be on Bulware because Bulware got there just after the ball did. Pretty good reaction. Michael Bulware was the deep safety reacting on the ball. Remember, this is an all star group of officials. There's going to be no foul for unnecessary roughness with the helmet. Did not contact him with the helmet. Third down. That's what I think they were looking at. I think they were looking at Michael Bulware. Yes. And, and then some, say somebody him. said they had a better angle on it. Right, right. He's number 28. And it looks like, you know, right there he comes in. You see it? That's exactly what it was. And then. They thought it looked like it was a helmet to helmet contact and then someone one of the officials from another angle saw that there wasn't helmet to helmet. So no foul third down and ten. Roethlisberger who started so hot 
in the three playoff games, one out of four for one yard in the period. Under pressure, steps away, great pocket presence. And then the pass is incomplete, intended for the rookie Nate Washington. He's covered by Marcus Trufant, and that'll do it for the first quarter. Super Bowl 40 in Detroit. Al Michaels, John Madd, Michelle Tafoya, and Susie Culver with you at the end of a first quarter in which Seattle, with a 47-yard field goal by Brown, leads 3-0. Pittsburgh does not have a first down, and they'll begin the second quarter with a Chris Gardaki punt. In fact, Pittsburgh has had three possessions, three three and out. Ben Roethlisberger's one for five. Seattle with five first downs and figured to have pretty good field position here again except Gardaki with a beautiful kick that backs Warwick up to the 22 yard line and Warwick gets a block Warwick down the sideline and Warwick takes the ball across the 50 to the 46 yard line. Well, you could see that one coming up here, Al. He had, he had the old picket fence. You know, you try and you have a return right or a return left. That was a return right, and you form a wall on that side. And from here, you, you could just see a perfect Seattle Seahawk wall. Holy. Number 35 receiving team. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Almost never fails. Etrick Pruitt with the foul. But well, it's still a good looking wall. Yep. <laughs> what? Watch the wall here. It's over here in the right. Right here, this is a wall being formed by the Seattle Seahawks. And right there, you just go right up that lane. It's funny, he got two real good clean blocks, and then Pruitt sort of an accessory on the run back here. Is right. the guy called for the foul? Right, he was, he was holding right there at the line of scrimmage, trying to hold his guy up from getting a release to get into coverage. So now they'll start from the 25-yard line. Hasselbeck will give it to Alexander. He gains five. We go to Susie Colbert. Al, talking to Seattle quarterback coach Jim Zorn, he explained how Matt Hasselbeck can have success against this complex Pittsburgh Steelers defense. He said the key is to avoid the mind clutter. Don't try to overanalyze. Let the coaches do the work. Just call the plays you're given. So I've watched Matt between series. He calls upstairs to Jim Zorn. They analyze the plays. The choices, don't call it. Change of protection or attack. And right now he attacks to the outside to Bobby Ingram and the pass is incomplete. John, we've been with the teams all week long. These are two of the coolest quarterbacks we've ever been around. You know, and I thought towards the end of the week that they kind of cracked. You know, they, you know, they're cool on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, we all are. But, uh, you know, the day before the game, they would be tight. They weren't tight yesterday. And I thought, well, the day of the game, you know, so I walked out in the field and Ben Roethlisberger was out there and he was just kind of hanging out like this. I've never seen a quarterback in a Super Bowl as cool as these two guys. As was Hasselbeck before the game, just soaking it all in. Third down and five. Hasselbeck rolling to his left, throws. That's caught. Joe Jerovicious makes the catch for a first down up at the 44-yard line. He's tackled by Bryant McFadden. You know, one of the things that Matt Hasselbeck said, or in fact, not one of the things, he said the most important thing, and I said it earlier, was, was handling the, the, the Steeler pressures, and they're doing a very good job of that. I mean, they, they won. Their pass protection is good. They're moving Hasselbeck a little. Hasselbeck is scrambling a little, and they are handling that part of the Steeler defense. That guy had Hasselbeck's haircut. Sean Alexander picks up three. Don Hasselbeck, father of Matt, played in a Super Bowl as a Los Angeles Raider 22 years ago and was a winner in that game. There he is. And brother Tim is the backup quarterback for the New York Giants. Yeah, and he's here too. He's on the, on the left of that group. But Don Hasselbeck was a tough guy. He was a good player. He was a smart football player. Now Alexander. Behind a Max Strong blocked across the 50-yard line, third down and two. Yeah, this is what we talked about where they want to run. You know, you'll get to the edges here. Don't try and run up the middle, but but get out there, get that edge block, get that linebacker block, and then cut off him. 
And if you look, they're just trying to run to the numbers. They're really not trying to run between the hashes on the field, but they're trying to run to these angles out to the numbers. Alexander comes out. He's already carried eight times for 23 yards. Third down and two. And the pass is caught, but then it is lost. It is incomplete. Incomplete. Never had possession. Jeremy Stevens, the tight end, hit by Chris Hope. So no fumble, incomplete, and fourth down coming up. Yeah, we're talking about Chris Palomalo and how they move move him all around. I mean, Troy Palomalo, how they move him all around. And then when that happens, then Chris Hope is a free safety. So if Palomalo is coming up and playing underneath, the guy that has to play the whole middle of the field is the guy that make the hit right there. And maybe if there's an underrated guy on this defense, it could be Chris Hope. I tell you, they could have ruled that a fumble. Here's Tom Ruins kick. Bouncing at the one and then going into the end zone. The credit to the Seattle defense. Only three teams held without a first down in the first quarter of a Super Bowl. Baltimore came back to win that game on O'Brien's field goal at the end. New England against that dominant. Chicago D in Super Bowl 20 and now tonight still minus a first down Pittsburgh starts its fourth drive and every one of them have started at the 20 yard line and Jerome Bettis is in the game for the first time so the flash bulbs are popping and the hometown boy has the ball faked to him and then thrown incomplete to the outside Bryce Fisher put the pressure on that time it'll be second down and 10 for Jerome Bettis it's a great story from Detroit started as a Ram he'll go to the Hall of Fame as a Pittsburgh Steeler will he or won't he retire is the question that is to be determined and then of course who can ever forget the fumble in Indianapolis the tackle by Roethlisberger if they win the Super Bowl that will go down in NFL war forever right and, and that's going to you know be so special and again I think it's special anyway that Ben Roethlisberger tackle after the best fumble but if they win the Super Bowl and it becomes a Super Bowl year that will be known as the tackle you, you won't have to say anything else except the tackle right, you get the catch you've got the drive you'd have the tackle two yard game there Tubbs makes the stop 1150 remaining in the first half and Jerome will come out now third down and eight Veron Haynes is their third down back and Seattle's been doing a very good job of stopping them on first and second down and great in third and long yardage you brought up the poor field position the Steelers have had but not getting any first downs they haven't gotten out of for a poor field position Roethlisberger out of the shotgun you'll never see the shotgun from Seattle not one snap in the shotgun this year for the Seahawks and that pass is juggled and then held onto by Antoine Randall L and that will be your first first down yeah, I, I, I circled that bunch out there, and you just see that's that's what you do against the zone. He had three wide receivers out there. He looks it off to the right to the single side, and then he comes back to Antoine Randall L to the side that he had the three wide receivers. You see, you have one coming in, one going out, one short, one medium, and one deep. Randall L loves to work over the middle, very effective there, and that time the ball almost slipped out of his hands. He was able to regather it. From the 30 yard line now. And they're going to run and end around with Heinz Ward with a lot of room to the outside for a first down and about a 17 yard gain before Manuel knocks him out of the bounds. And that's the first gadget that we see from the Steelers. And, and that's what they try and do. Bill Cower loves gadgets and you love them in this type of situation when you don't have momentum. Momentum's going the other way. Everything's going the other way. You need a change and you come back with a play like this or reverse. They call that a gadget and it gets them to big play and it could change change momentum. That last time out was taken an injury time at Marquine Manuel who tackled Ward at the end of the play shaken up he was out of bounds but they had to stop it. Take a look here. Well you see first of all there's a helmet to helmet contact so it could be that and then if you look right there it could be his ankle right there. You're not sure if that's a, a head an ankle or something in between. But right now Etrick Pruitt comes in second year safety out of southern Mississippi to replace him. 
Pittsburgh back-to-back -back first downs on the move now at the 48-yard line. With Seattle up three nothing. Fake draw. Play action. Roethlisberger deep but short and picked off at the 16-yard line by Michael Boulware. Antoine Randall, the intended receiver. Roethlisberger had time off the fake, but Boulware stayed right with him. Ben Roethlisberger had a real hot start in each of his last two games, but tonight, as you take a look at the AFC Championship game in the first half against Denver, 180 yards tonight, nine yards as Hasselback throws, and that is caught on the outside by Bobby Ingram. And it'll be second down and seven at the 20-yard line. Yeah, it kind of looks like a, the Pittsburgh offense and Ben Roethlisberger in this in this first half so far. They don't look like they have a plan. You know, you can't say what are they trying to do? Are they trying to throw on first down like they've done in the playoff games, or are they trying to get a running game going? And, and they haven't gotten anything established, and it, you can't see where they're going yet. You can kind of see Seattle's plan. You can't see Pittsburgh's offensive plan yet. Steelers very, very tentative. Alexander gets ridden down by Joey Porter. Porter yet to really make his presence felt in the game, but during the course of the season, and especially in postseason. Yeah, and he's playing that position, that right outside linebacker in a three-man line. That's a position that Lawrence Taylor made popular. You know, that, that you better block him with a lineman because if you just leave him on an edge like he is right here and block him with a back, he's going to win that battle. Hey, Walter Jones comes out and blocks him. Porter, Brock. He goes back into pass coverage on third and three, and they get it out to Strong, and then Strong is taken down by the cornerback to Shea Townsend, and they're going to mark it a little bit short of the first down. Bill Levy will bring the chains in. Is Max Strong, a 13-year fullback who will go to the Pro Bowl out of Georgia. There he is. Of course, that's becoming an extinct position with a lot of teams. Right, and, and that that and the strong side linebacker, and you don't even you know, hear much about those guys. And I was talking to Mike Holmgren about that the other day, and he said the slot guy in three wide receivers has taken his position. Now Mike Holmgren has a decision. I think in this situation, I think you have to punt. I do too. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you look and it's just inches, and you wish you yeah. would have gotten the first down, and it's easy to say go for it. But I mean, you have momentum, you have stuff going. You're not going to let the Steelers have the ball at this position on the field. Not at your own 26. You've dominated the game in the sense it's only three nothing, but you've had the ball 14 and a half minutes to six and a half minutes, and of course, nothing would give the opponent more momentum than not making a fourth and one at your own 26. Yeah, but it's tough for coaches and fans when some referee goes like this and he puts his <laughs> hands like three inches apart and says that's all you have to go for a first down yep. and you say punting team. But you have to do it. As most coaches say though you listen to your crowd and what they want to do and pretty soon you're sitting with them. Ruins kick caught 29 yard line by Antoine Randall in the slippery one. Brings it back to the 42-yard line, and the ball is loose, but they're going to say it was down. Down, and the whistle is blown. Tonight on Pat. Big Ben from the town of Findlay, Ohio, not far from here, down I-75. Played his college football at Miami of Ohio. I uh, saying that Ben Roethlisberger has to throw more on first down. He's really tried three times and hasn't completed one yet. So I have to say he has to throw more on first down and complete them. Randall all shaken up on the punt return is not on the field. Otherwise he'd be one of their receivers. And Willie Parker yet to get it started. Let's go to Susie Calder. Well, Al, here's the update on free safety. Mark Han Manuel, he is questionable with a left groin injury. They had him behind towels just a moment ago so they could pull his pants down and tape up his groin, and now he's just trying to get it loosened up. They're hoping he can get back in there. And already you can see the bandage on his chin, and you've got Etrick Pruitt in there. Manuel would be a, a big loss. And remember, Manuel was the guy that took Ken Hamlin's place. Right. Hamlin hurt in a fight outside a bar on a Sunday night in midseason and done for the season as Parker takes it up to the 45 yard line and it will be third down and six and this crowd it's it's a it's a it's a Pittsburgh dominated crowd I mean the Super Bowl is supposed to be a neutral site well this place before the game when the Steelers got introduced 
was about as neutral as Lake Placid was when the U.S. was playing the Soviet Union in 1980. Now they were crazy then, but they're kind of quiet during the game. I wonder if these are really Steeler, real Steeler fans, or if they just had a bunch of terrible towels they were handing out <laughs> somewhere. Third and six, and Randall Ellis back in the game. Four wideouts against six defensive backs. Roethlisberger is going to shovel it, and it's going to be caught by Heinz Ward, and he's going to pick up a first down of the 43-yard line. And Roethlisberger is so adept at absorbing contact and getting away and then making something happen. 12-yard game. Yeah, that's where he's his best. The Seattle Seahawks uh, defensive coordinator John Marshall said, guys just drip off him. And I think you see a drip off right there. And then, and then what I like about him, he... He stays alive. I mean, that one, he just kind of flipped underhand out there to Heinz Ward, but he keeps looking downfield, trying to make a play in the passing game, not run with the ball. Roethlisberger is three of his first nine for 21 yards. The ball is at the Seattle 43-yard line, trying to get a running game going, and they can't. And despite not having a running game in their last two playoffs games, it was Roethlisberger through the air that did it. Normally, Pittsburgh loves to chew up the clock and run the ball, but they proved in their last two games against Indy and Denver, it doesn't have to be that way. And that's the way Ken, uh, that, that, that Roethlisberger wanted to do it. Remember, he told us early in the season, he said, we run on first down, run on second down, and then if we don't do well, then I get in the shotgun and we throw on third down. He said, I want to throw more on first and second down. Then they started to do it, and they were a lot more successful. Second down and nine, the ball is at the 43-yard line. Ward sets up on a wing. Roethlisberger throws deep over the middle, and that's caught at the 22-yard line by Cedric Wilson, who's really come on in postseason. Free agent picked up from San Francisco, and on the receiving end of a 20-yard catch here. Yeah, this is a cover three, and what they're trying to do is just hit the seam. And the seam is inside this corner, Trufant here, before you get to the safety. There's a seam there between the corner and the cover three and the safety. And he just hit him perfectly in that seam of his zone. Now the ball at the 22. Bill Cowher was saying that Cedric Wilson is really his best route runner. Deepest penetration for the Steelers by a lot. Roethlisberger, the pump fake, goes to the corner of the end zone and off the fingertips of Heinz Ward. Andre Dyson covering on the play. It'll be second down. That's one thing Ben Roethlisberger has learned, isn't it? You know, to, to, to pump off. If you're going to throw right, pump left, and try and get that safety out of there, and then you really have a true one-on-one. -on -one. He got the true one-on-one, -on -one and he just threw it a little long. I, I don't know. I mean, Heinz Ward should have caught that ball, but I don't know. Had he caught it, I think he still would have been out of bounds, right? Well, let's take a look. Yeah, he was close. Sure. Agreed. Too tough to get two feet in. Second down and ten from the 22-yard line. Ben again under some pressure. Set up the screen. It's the bus. And Bettis gets tripped up, and there's a flag down. Jerome gets to the 17-yard line, pending the call. Bill Levy, the referee, is a retired policeman and a retired fireman. And he's a very, very good referee. Prior to the pass, offensive pass interference, number 83. Offense. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. That's Heath Miller. Bill Levy was actually a high school referee about 30 years ago and refed a game in which Mike Holmgren was an assistant coach at a San Jose high school. Oak Grove High School, and Mike Holmgren remembered Bill Levy from that time, and Bill Levy remembered Mike Holmgren. <laughs> you wonder why, and you wonder how. I don't know when I was a high school coach. I was never a high school coach, but I don't know that I could remember. A referee's name. And if I, well, I wouldn't be a referee either. <laughs> I was going to say, if I was a referee, I wouldn't know an assistant coach's name. And they meet again in the Super Bowl. Second down and 20. Play fake. Under pressure from the outside, and that's Grant Wistrom, the former Ram, who comes in, gets around his block, and knocks down Big Ben for the moment, takes him out of field goal range. And Grant Wistrom will always make that play. I mean, he has that motor, goes 110 percent. You know, he, he just keeps moving, just keeps moving. He's there against Marvell Smith. He gets into him, gets his feet working, gets his hands working, gets to the outside and makes a big sack. You know, this team, the Seahawks, led the league in sacks. They had 50 sacks, but you say, well, who did it? They had 11 different guys do it. Third down and 28 out of the shotgun now. Roethlisberger. 
Three-man rush. He's going to take off. He has time. He's going to launch one. And it is going to be caught at the three-yard line by Heinz Ward. So Ben Roethlisberger is able to move out of the pocket, and then he had to be so careful about where the line of scrimmage was. He almost looked around to his left to make sure he didn't cross that line, and then he saw where the marker was and is able to launch a big pass downfield. Yeah, Ben Roethlisberger told us one of his secrets in scrambling is when that end gets up the field like Wistrom does, escape to that side, get out to that side, and continue to look downfield and throw the ball. He says, I got a secret in scrambling, and then he said, but I'm not going to tell you. And then he told us, and we just saw it on that play. End up the field, tackle down, take that window and throw out of it. Time out. Timeout taken by Pittsburgh. Ben Roethlisberger, I thought, came very close to going across the line of scrimmage. Once you do that, you can't throw the ball. You can't back up. Going to put a red line in here, and you're going to take a look at this. Yeah, the red line is the line of scrimmage. You see that end getting up the field. The tackling, that lets him get out to the left. Now, did he throw before he got to the red line? Yes. Yeah. Oh, baby. Well, that was like he knew where that red line was. Yep, and that's and that would have been a reviewable play. Now the bus taking it to the one-yard line. So Jerome Bettis coming home. Is this the end of the career? Might be. And what a way to end it. In your hometown in the Super Bowl. And will they give it to him again? The Bettis clan. And you know that they're going to give it to him down here. I mean, this is what Jerome Bettis does. He runs short yardage, runs goal line. But they say they, they start the game with Willie Parker, and they, they start the drives with Willie Parker, and they finish him with Jerome Bettis. Steelers have been terrific inside the five-yard line this season. One reason has been Bettis, but they're going to stop him here, setting up a very big early third down play here. This is going to be a tough rundown. I could see a play-action pass. And instead, it's Roethlisberger around the keeper diving. And does he get there? Yes, he does. The linesman came in. It looked like he was going to spot it. Then he came closer. And Roethlisberger is able to score the touchdown on the 11th play of the drive. Yeah, I think the way the Seattle defense hit that second down play, I think they had to come up with something like this, where you, where you give them the tailback, you give them the fullback, and then you let the quarterback make the play for you. And a reviewable play, if Mike Holmgren's coaches upstairs tell him that they want this to be challenged. You can challenge this play. You take a look. Does the ball, does the ball get to the, 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 the goal line? I, I take it uh, back about the guys upstairs. This is up to the replay official now because we're just inside two minutes, just inside the two-minute warning. Do the guys upstairs, does the replay official upstairs want to take a look at this? Bill Levy is going to take a look at this because it's close enough. The key here is that any part of the ball goes over or touches any part of the goal. In other words, the front of the goal line is part of the end zone. And initially, it looked as if he was going to spot the ball. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's the call on the field. And it's a touchdown for the Steelers. Just any part of the ball breaking the plane of the goal line. But he either saw that it did or couldn't tell whether or not it did. Right. And he stayed with the call on the field. Call on the field stands. We to attempt the point after. Gardaki will hold. And Jeff Reed tacks on the conversion with a minute and 55 seconds remaining. Fourteen seasons, he's still only 48 years old. His whole family is here. You may have seen the feature on the pregame show, Kathy Holmgren, wife of Mike, on a medical mission trip to the Republic of Congo, and that was planned, and Mike said, no, you're going to go ahead. I, I just can't envision Kathy in a sports bar in Brazzaville right now. Well, yeah, and, and she's with her daughter, who's a doctor, so uh, 
you know, the two of them have to be sweating this thing out in the Congo. <laughs> yes. The one hopper taken at the 20-yard line by Maurice Morris, who's the backup to Alexander, and a flag thrown at the end of the play at the 39-yard line. During the return, holding number 57, the turn taken, 10 yard penalty, first down. It's Kevin Bentley. Bill Levy, our referee, given a good, strong holding. Oh, did you hear that slap? <laughs> <laughs> Pop! <laughs> Holy, he'll show him. <laughs> and there's the man who's called for the hole, Bentley. Halftime coming up, and that means. First half highlights with Chris Berman and the gang. The Sprint Halftime Show. And the feature there, of course, is the live performance by the Rolling Stones. So this Pittsburgh crowd with a chant of defense, defense. Of course, Pittsburgh less than 300 miles away. Seattle about 2,500 miles from Detroit. From the 27-yard line. Hasselback over the middle, and that's caught by Joe Jerovicious in traffic. Absorbs a hit. Ball up at the 46-yard line. Seattle hustling to the line of scrimmage. They have two timeouts remaining. And that was that same scene we were talking about in the cover three. Joe Jerovicious being a tall, wide receiver can get body angle. Hasselback feeling the pocket. Outside, he works it to Alexander. He's tackled at midfield by Tyrone Carter. Seattle has two timeouts here, and again, your goal here is to get inside the 30. That's your first goal, to get in field goal position, and once you get inside the 30, then you go for the touchdown. And Seattle takes a timeout. They have one left. It, it reminds me a little bit, though, of that game two years ago between New England and Carolina where there was not a lot that went on in the first half. It was very low scoring, and then it was a phenomenal second half. Right, and I think it's the type of thing, you know, you spar, you spar, you spar. You want to see you know, what they're going to do against this, what they're going to do against that. You expect a lot of blitzing by the Steelers. You haven't seen it. You know, are they going to do more of it? And then, and then you put a plan together for the second half. Second down and six. Hasselback throwing. And that's caught by Bobby Ingram at the 40-yard line. That'll move the chains with a minute five. The Steelers are saying they haven't blitzed a lot in this first half. That play they did. They brought uh, a Troy Palomalo in there, and Seattle did a good job of picking it up. Now only a three-man rush, and eight are back, and the pass is launched down the right sideline and out of bounds. It's Jackson who made five catches in the first quarter, but none here, covered by Ike Taylor, and he was out of bounds. He only had one foot in on that play, but remember you go back to yesterday and Matt Hasselbeck, and you know, who's going to be the big player in this game? And he kept smiling and saying, Daryl Jackson, I think Daryl Jackson's going to have a Ooh. big game. He had the left foot in, he didn't get the right foot in. Ooh. Very close. Yeah, that's why, I mean, that's that's a receiver on that. I mean, he got a little too close to that sideline. That's why you always want to have a cushion between yourself and the sideline Well, did about he, five yards. Did he get close? No, they're going to take a timeout out of the Steelers. I thought for a second they're going to review it upstairs. I don't see what's reviewable about it. It was pretty clear, but timeout is taken now by Pittsburgh defensively. So now second and ten. Holmgren on the mic. Talks right into Hasselbeck's helmet. And they have one timeout, which is big because he doesn't have to throw the ball to the sideline. He can still throw it inside because he has a timeout. And they're going to give it to Alexander, so they're going to run it for about four. But Kiesel makes the tackle. The ball at the 36-yard line. Clock running down under 40. I guess when you think you have one timeout, you can also run. I don't understand that play. Yeah. Josh Brown loosening up. Clock ticking down to 25. Normally they're quickly paced and now taking a lot of time. Well, yeah, and it's way too much time. Whoa, I mean, run, boy. And then this time is not smart play. Oh, boy. And timeout taken by Pittsburgh with the play clock ticking down with, thir well, 13 seconds. And it could wind up leaving a timeout on the wall here. So that. The Seahawks, who have been so professional, especially in postseason, 
at that tempo game of the pace. They had just called the timeout, and now they go up to the line of scrimmage, and they wasted all of that time there. You know, and, and, and Matt Hasselbeck was going back and forth and back and forth, and it looked like he was going to be in the shotgun. And, and remember, Seattle doesn't have a shotgun, <laughs> right. and this is when you would be using one. But the play that I didn't understand is a running play. Then they probably called two plays, you know, a running play and then you know, followed by a passing play with no huddle and, and they got it discombobbled and they got confused. So so they took really too much time. And then I don't understand why the Steelers took a timeout. Yeah. Third down and six. At the 36 yard line. Right now you'd be looking at about a 54 yard field goal. And Hasselback is going to go deep down the sideline, but that one's going to be out of bounds for Jackson. So now you have seven seconds. Very unusual because for a Mike Holmgren coach team and the offensive prowess and playing pretty really smart at the end of halves and games to get caught in this situation where you have to kick a field goal of this distance with seven seconds yeah. left and you're going to leave a timeout up on the wall. Is stunning. It doesn't make any sense. A run doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, not running a, a you know, medium-sized type pass in the middle. 54 yards for Josh Brown, and that kick is no good. A very weird sequence for the Seattle offense to end this first half. With two seconds left, one more snap for Pittsburgh. That will make you make a coach scratch his head because I think I'm scratching my head up here. You know, again the run, and then you wonder why you didn't go. You know, having a timeout, why you didn't you know throw an in and get in field goal position. And if you still have some time, then 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 you go for the touchdown. Sometimes you overthink. We'll end it with a Roethlisberger kneel down, and that will be the end of. The first half of Super Bowl 40. So the first half, it's closed. Not going to win any Academy Awards. But we, we've talked about games that do break out in the second half. What kind of a pace and tone do you expect now in the second half, John? Well, I think if Seattle would go to that pace that they started with. Remember, they started the up tempo and they started hitting those quick outs and those types of things and then they got away from it. I think that they should go back to that and maybe stop running those sweeps and maybe trying to start run inside now. And I think as Bill Cower was saying just before the half I don't know that they really have a plan and if they do it doesn't seem to be working. He said what his plan is is Ben has to settle down and they have to get their running game going now. I think at some point this game is going to be put in Ben Roethlisberger's hands. I mean they've had in the playoffs they've had that thing where they did get ahead they'd get the lead and right. they could come and run in the second half. It doesn't look like this is going to be that kind of second half for them. They come down to the quarterbacks on on each side. Now at the end of the first half a lot of confusion with Seattle to clear that up. Let's go to Susie Colbert. Well I asked Mike Holmgren about it and he said that what happened was he called a play and Matt Hasselbeck audible. He called another play and Matt Hasselbeck audible again. Then he said the Steelers called a timeout which was smart on their part because they lost 10 seconds. But he said really their offense is operating fairly efficiently. He said three touchdown passes were out by just a foot. He told his guys at halftime we just need to settle down. We're almost there. Michelle. Well, Susie, speaking of settling down, I was told just before the half by Bill Cower that Ben Roethlisberger needed to settle down. I asked him just now how he planned to do that, get him to settle down. He said Ben really does that for himself, and we're confident he'll do it. We give all the credit in the world to Seattle's defense. They did a good job of slowing down our run. We're going to continue to try to mix the run with the pass and get some momentum going. We've got to convert on third downs, and we can't accept the penalties that slowed us down early in this ballgame. Al? All right, thank you. Michelle and they have mixed the pass and run at a 50 50 ratio in the first half with 13 rushes 13 passes we have Jerome Bettis mic'd up for the game and here was Bettis when Roethlisberger scored the only touchdown of the first half yeah. I caught you. I caught you, 
Good job, baby. Good job, baby. Good job. I saw I him stuck that guy. I tried to go over, and that's when I got hit from that's the That's he got caught. And that's the scene on the sideline afterwards. And then, of course, they had to wait through a booth review, and the call was upheld. That was a pretty good block by Jerome Bettis, though. He was proud of it. He got Lofa Tutupu. And if, if someone's going to make that, that play on the goal line, it would be Tutupu. So Pittsburgh will get the ball as we start the third quarter. Ricardo Coakley will receive the kick. Josh Brown will send it toward the end zone. 7-3. to three. Pittsburgh on top. Second half underway in Super Bowl 40. Coakley from the four, coming straight up the middle. And then popped by Jordan Babineau as he gets to the 24-yard line. They better stop popping. Yeah. Little tussling going on. I think this is a big drive here. I mean, I mean, if Pittsburgh could go down and score, then they could really play their type of game. Then they could get into that run mode. And they could get more aggressive and blitz more on defense. Now, if Seattle doesn't want that to happen, then they need, you know, a big defensive series here. And like a great bullpen closer in baseball, few coaches are better than Bill Cowher at making sure you have a victory once you get a decent sized lead. More on that later. Extra Pruitt, meanwhile, does start the second half. Mark Rand Manuel got hurt in the first half, has him in back. Willie Parker starts at running back. From the 25-yard line, and Roethlisberger from a short three-step drop throws it a little bit behind Ward, covered by Andre Dyson. And let's take a look at some of the key numbers through the first 30 minutes. Neither team doing a lot on the ground, which is sort of surprising in Seattle's case with the league rushing champion. Then Roethlisberger, that mo a good percentage of those passing yards on that one key pass on third and 28, 37, in fact. Marquan uh, Manuel will not return now. So he is out. We're going to see Pruitt for the rest of the day. And you're going to see Parker bursting one over the right side. They call him Fast Willie Parker. And Fast Willie Parker has just gone 75 yards for a touchdown. That was a change in momentum that the Steelers were talking about. They had three wide receivers. Seattle was in nickel defense. So this is what you want to do. Get them to think that you're going to pass. Then you get a little counter, a good block there. You just get by that safety again. They had that eighth man up. Once you get by with, with, with that nickel, you only have one safety back there, and you outrun that guy. Parker had had six carries for 11 yards before that one. Alan Fanica made a heck of a block. Did you see him pull and get that block that sprung Parker? That's why he may be the best guard in the league. One car travels towards it. Longest rushing play in the history of the Super Bowl. Marcus Allen had held the record and if you follow football you, you can see the Allen run in your eye going one way coming back the other way in Tampa for the Raiders against Washington in Super Bowl 18 a phenomenal run this one just a quick shot over the right side a great block by Allen Fanica and 75 yards for fast Willie Parker you know when the Steelers have success run and they usually run to the left side behind Fanica then when they run to the right they pull Fanica so either way they're getting in behind Alan Fanica, one of the best guards in football. The John, best lineman in football. You said key early drive. Here comes another one. Yeah, the Steelers, the Steelers needed that. Now they can really put pressure on Seattle. Here's Josh Scobie taking the kick from the four-yard line. And Scobie gets taken down by Kiesel up at the 29-yard line. And back we go to the longest run in any of the 40 Super Bowls. Yeah, we'll see Alan Fanica right here. Watch Michael Bulwer when he comes up and misses then he breaks through and he gets right on the safety Pruitt and Pruitt takes a bad angle. So you see Fanica pull make the tackle right there in Leroy Hill. Bulwer miss and now the only guy is Pruitt and he's the backup or the third safety. He takes a bad angle and then Willie Parker gets a touchdown. 
from the 29 yard line Hasselbeck goes to work and it is juggled and dropped by Alexander who a few years ago was catching a lot of passes but this year averaged about one reception per game covered by Higgins the Seahawks statistically how have they done Hasselbeck 118 yards in the half Alexander the rushing champion averaged better than five yards per carry during the regular season 3.1 and then Jackson had those five receptions all in the first quarter they've got Jackson lining up in the backfield here number 82 and they'll send him in motion on second down and 10. Hasselbeck goes the other way and the pass is caught out in the flat by Maurice Morris and he is taken down up at about the 35 yard line by Ike Taylor it'll be third down and four and yeah, Morris is a is a running back so they split him out as a wide receiver put the wide receiver Daryl Jackson in the backfield put him in motion on the other side and then throw it back to this side to Mo Morris. Third down and four. That'll two defensive linemen three linebackers six defensive backs and they were going to come on a blitz. Hasselbeck just hold that held that snap count. Third down and four might have changed it to a run gives it to Max Strong for a first down Max Strong who of course is noted for his blocking go to the Pro Bowl because of that but occasionally gets the ball in fact he had a big run in the playoff game against Washington. Yeah and that's what teams try and do when it's not third and long and the Steelers go into that two defensive linemen three linebackers six defensive backs they, they want to run against them and get them out of it. Watch Troy Palomalo miss there you don't see that an awful lot. That's Seattle's first rushing first down. They have eight through the air. Now you've got Alexander to the short side of the field and a little bit of what has made him the rushing champ and the league MVP in evidence on that play. And Steve I Hutchinson, think, the guard, leading the way, John. You know, I was going to say, Al, I think that's probably one of the adjustments that, that Mike Holmgren and the Seahawks made is, is they were trying to stretch that thing and get it outside and get it to the sidelines on a sweep and now they're getting it out there and, and cutting it back. And I think I think you just can't keep going to the sideline at some point you have to get a, a kick out and then and then cut back inside it. They didn't let the edges cut them back. That was a 21 yard game play fake buys time throws and it is juggled and then incomplete Jeremy Stevens in amongst the defensive triangle there and Stevens of course in the papers all week long with the back and forth with Joey Porter the tight end over the middle just couldn't hang on at the end and Jeremy Stevens is six foot seven so he's a, a big target down the middle and Matt Hasselbeck thinks all you have to do is throw it up over the linebackers and you'll get a completion he threw it up over the linebackers that was a perfect throw Jeremy Stevens just didn't make the play. Second down and 10. Stevens comes out. Back they go to a three receiver set. And Alexander in the backfield, and Alexander with the football, taking it to the 32 yard line where the linebacker Larry Foote makes the tackle. It'll set up a third down and five at the 32. Now I think if they can, you know, if they can keep this mixture up and get Sean Alexander going in this second half. And make the Steelers play both run and pass. I think they'll have an advantage. If they get one dimensional, the Steeler defense could take over the game. But the Seahawks right now aren't letting them do that. Alexander comes out on third and five. That's conventional. There's no threat as a pass receiver. That's a two-three dime again. Two defensive linemen, three linebackers. Six defensive backs. See if they run again. Oh, they just do get the playoff. And then a fade is thrown toward Jackson. And Jackson gets tangled up. Incidental contact, no flag, and an incomplete pass. Chris Hope put the pressure on that time on the safety blitz. And Jackson didn't even look like he knew that the ball was coming. And that's one of those things when when you get that blitz, he has to know that the ball's coming. Although he did take a peek there. He tried to get a little push off then he couldn't relocate the ball now a 50 yard attempt for Josh Brown if he misses it Pittsburgh will get it at the 40 and he has missed it.
Seahawks defense already down free safety. Marquan Manuel now down cornerback Andre Dyson as well. He came into this game with an injured quad. They've been stretching it, trying to work it out, but he's obviously in some pain now. He is, and Kelly Herndon takes over. The ex-Bronco, number 31, will take his spot. After the missed field goal, he'll start from the 40-yard line off the play fake to Bettis, and Roethlisberger's pass is caught. Great catch off the top of the turf by Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward just inches above the field turf here at Ford Field, makes the catch. You know, doesn't Heinz Ward make an amazing play every time you watch him in the and the play, he's the inside receiver here, and the play could be, uh, you know, you know, a catch. It could be a block, but this guy just makes big plays. And Roethlisberger was telling us the, the other day that on most passes that the Steelers have, Heinz Ward is the first read. Average over 14 yards per catch. So that flexible Burris go to New York. Ward took over as the guy, and the bus rumbles to the 40-yard line. And speaking of the bus. We have him mic'd up. You gotta know, you gotta know that corner is coming, is gonna be coming out. So you might have to go inside of him. Based on based on his angle way coming in, you're not gonna be able to get outside of him. See what I'm saying? So you gotta you see him, stick him out back inside. Whoa! Ah! That's so, what you say to a guy after he makes after he makes a long run for a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Ah! <laughs> Second and four. Rocky Bernard chases Roethlisberger and the pass is incomplete. And this is a very key defensive series here for Seattle. I mean, think of what's happened to the Seahawks. They led three nothing. They could have been up by a lot more. They had an offensive pass interference. They had a couple of catches deep downfield out of bounds. They had the Roethlisberger third and long, which he converted. They had the disputed touchdown. They had the clock mismanagement at the end of the first half. They had Willie Parker run 75 yards. They missed a 50-yard field goal. This is big for Seattle right here. Right. On that last offensive drive, you just had the feeling that they could move the ball, but they can't finish the deal. Third down and four. Roethlisberger swings it to the outside. That's Ward. He breaks the tackle. He's inside the 30. He takes it to the 23-yard line. Got out of Kelly Herndon's grasp. Herndon, the guy playing in place of the injured Dyson. 16 yards. Lofa Tutupu is going to come on a blitz. So what that's telling him. Ben Roethlisberger, when he sees him coming, and he knows that he has man-to-man -man on the outside. Tutupu doesn't get picked up, which also tells Roethlisberger, I better get the ball out of here quickly, and he does to Heinz Ward for a first down. At the 23-yard line. The bus, big seam, first down to the 10. Yeah, we talk about Alan Fanica, and you know if, if the Steelers make a big run, this guy here is usually involved somewhere. He'll pull right here, he pulls left, he gets the kickoff, and Jerome Bettis just gets in and just cuts right inside him. And he protects that ball, and then, you know, Jerome Bettis is one of those guys that always carries the ball in one arm. It's his right arm. He always carries the ball in his right arm. First and ten just outside the ten. Conceivably, they could get a first down without a touchdown. They'd be at about the one-inch line. Gain of about three. Talk to Jerome Bettis. I have a lot of people recently about will he or won't he retire. I got, you know, sometimes a guy knows, but he just won't say. I'm not sure he knows. Well, he said he hadn't talked to Bill Cower about it yet, and the one thing he would want to talk to him about is does he have to practice? He said he practiced every every day this week, I mean, this, this year, and he doesn't think that he can do that. He said to us the other day, my body's okay. The question is, how will they use the body? Second and six. Jerome again. And this time he gets taken down at the six-yard line. Kelly Herndon is the first guy there. It'll be third down. Mike Holmgren team trying to keep it a two-possession game. Hold him to a field goal. Third down and six from the seven-yard line. Haynes is their third down back. He's in the backfield. They send him in motion and empty it. Four-man rush. It's flipped to the outside and in a 
intercepted by Kelly Herndon. Herndon to the 30. Roethlisberger is the only guy out in front of him, and he gets blocked out of the play. And then for Herndon finally runs out of gas on a gigantic play on a pass intended for Cedric Wilson. So here are the Seahawks just trying to hold him to a field goal, and the next thing you know, they are right back in the game. Once I saw the Steelers get that ball, put Jerome Bettis in, get down in the red zone, Bill Cower folded arms, I didn't think I would see this. He said Herman just undercuts that one. He's tried to get Cedric Wilson to the outside. He just undercuts it, goes right up the field, gets a good block there by D.D. Lewis. So a big, big play for Seattle would have been to hold him to an incompletion instead of an interception. And now Alexander. After starting to the right, goes to the left and takes it to the 18-yard line. And this is another opportunity for, for Seattle. I said, you know, they haven't been able to close the deal. They haven't been able to finish it. You know, they 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 get plays, they get down there, but they haven't been able to get scores. Herndon, again, he's the guy who came in as soon as you talked about Dyson out of the game. And then Herndon had gotten beaten on a ward pass reception. Then the big play here for the former Bronco, 76-yard run back. And you can see Kelly Herndon, he took an intercept angle. He, he undercut that thing. Second down and six. The ball at the 16-yard line. Hasselback throws over the middle, and the pass a little behind, and off the left shoulder of Bobby Ingram. Incomplete. Third down and six. He had that double slant in there. He had Ingram going in first, and Jeremy Stevens coming in behind him. And I think they got too close. You like a bigger separation in that when you have two guys running the same pattern. You don't want them that close. And you see what happened. Stevens got held up in hell is what happened. Third down and six. From the 16. Alexander in the eye. The play fake. In the pocket. Hasselbeck throws. Touchdown. Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens, who had dropped two, makes his first catch of the game, 16 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, they've been putting Jeremy Stevens as a tight end in these playoffs and always running him. Here he is right here and running him on a post. Now they start him up and Palomaro starts to play that post. They kind of run a pick down there. They have a guy coming into the post and then they have Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Stevens going to the corner. And they kind of picked off out there. Watch Palomalo. He's 43. He has he has Jeremy Stevens. He kind of gets picked off by the post coming in there as, as the tight end goes to the corner. The extra point by Josh Brown. Hasselbeck and the Seattle Seahawks in a lot better shape than they were about five minutes ago. Five minutes on your watch. Herndon with the interception. There he is in the middle. It's the longest interception return in the history of the Super Bowl. Willie Brown playing for John Madden's Raiders in 11 held the record 75 yards. Remember that you still see it on highlights and uh, Bill King makes the call and <laughs> there goes old man Willie. He called. Holy Toledo. Touchback. Mike Taylor downs it there to the 20. John goes to the clicker here. Now let's watch a touchdown again. Here's Jeremy Stevens. Now he's going to come up and he's going to run a corner. Now Daryl Jackson come in here and, and as he comes in the post he kind of slows up here and goes in front of Palomalo. And you'll see that they, it kind of forms a pick. If we look at it right here. You see what happens. We got four guys in there and then when they break out Stevens is wide open. So, so you had a post by Daryl Jackson and a corner by Jeremy Stevens. I think it was it was it was important to, if you saw the way Jackson kind of slowed up instead of trying to get beyond Palomalo he stopped and went in, or slowed up and went in front of him and then he was kind of picked off so that Jeremy Stevens could get to that corner. Chuck Yacobi is the injured uh, stealer as they work on him on the field. I mean just an amazing turn of events talking about all the things that had gone wrong for Seattle over the last couple of minutes of the first half first part of this half and we were about ready to put up a graphic where Bill Cowher is almost unbeaten when he leads by 11 or more and now all of a sudden it's a ball game again when they got down there and they put in Jerome Bettis and then you see Bill Cowher over this stand like this I'm sure he was going to take the air out of the ball and just keep running and we got in third down I thought he would still do it or go to shotgun and then when he didn't do it you know that 
that is not Bill Cowher like because you think, okay, I'll run it. I'll probably score with the run. If I don't, I'll kick a field goal and we'll be ahead 17 3. And then throw a pass out into the flat, the riskiest kind of pass. Parker, a three yard run to the 23 yard line with about six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Mike Holmgren is saying, whoo, we dodged one there. <laughs> But that was a play that they'd worked on. You know, as I said, in the in the playoffs, they'd been running Stevens on the on the post and you know throwing that ball deep to him. That time they kind of started on post, run Jackson on the post, and ran him back to the corner. Second down and seven. Marcus Tubbs is in there. Bernard has not come back into the game after the interception run back. Came up a little bit gimpy. Here's Parker, tackled there by Lofa Tatupu. So right now, Seattle. Minus Mark Manuel is out for the game. The cornerback Andre Dyson was hurt, and of course Herndon took his spot. And the defensive tackle Bernard, another starter, is on the bench at the moment. And Herndon comes in and makes a big play. Well, we went to to practice the other day. Uh, uh, Dyson didn't practice at all, and the guy they were uh, that was doing all the work and got all the practice at least that day was Kelly Herndon. Third down and four now to the shotgun from the 26-yard line. And it's an inside handoff, and it's the third down back, and that's for Ron Haynes, and he does not get the first down. He gets on to the 29-yard line, so Seattle with a defensive stop, three and out, 5.20 to go in the period. Let's go to Susie Colbert. Well, the word on Rocky Bernard, the defensive tackle, is he is doubtful with the right hamstring pull. It looked like he was hit by a sniper on that Kelly Herndon interception and return. He was trying to lay a block, and you could see it just go. So they're minus, they're starting free safety, they're minus a cornerback, a starting cornerback, and now Bernard a starting tackle. What do you think they were looking at that they made him take his pants off? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that you check a hamstring that way. They had one five second delay. I don't even want to risk a, a guess. Gardaki's punt fielded at the 25 yard line by Peter Warwick. Warwick looking for a block and doesn't get it. Good coverage there by the Pittsburgh Steelers. James Harrison. What kind of a finish do we have in store in this one? From the 27 yard line that is dropped so figure go figure Jeremy Stevens three drops and one catch the catch for a touchdown. You know and he was he was one of the guys that you know Matt Hasselbeck talked about Daryl Jackson and the other guy that you know he talked about was Jeremy Stevens you know having big days today and and you can see that you know you know they have things planned for him and we saw the touchdown in the corner and and some of these things you know send a guy deep and put him underneath so they have plans for Jeremy Stevens in the passing game. Second and ten. Jackson had those five catches as a flag is thrown by Bill Number 37 offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Sean Alexander and that'll get disputed by Hasselbeck. You know you look at that you know that Jeremy Stevens dropping the ball to the drops he had and then you remember last year and you know the biggest problem they had on offense was was dropping passes and they and they kind of got out of that this year. I mean, they you know they, they've been a lot better in that area. Yeah, that that has been the bugaboo for Seattle, especially in, in postseason play last year against St. Louis. Chance to win the game or at least send it into overtime. A drop at the end, second and 15. Hasselbeck's going to launch it, going deep, one on one, and incomplete. The coverage is perfect by Thompson on Joe Jerovicious. That's one of the things that they're trying to get here is, is always have Joe Juravicious on that backside. You know, like have two or three receivers on one side, Joe Juravicious over there by himself, get a one on one. And again, because you know of his size, just get the ball up there and let him out muscle for it. Third down and 15. There's is that two three dime again. And there's no problem here because there's no way that Seattle's going to run or run and hurt you in this defense. Pass it back. A lot of time. Underneath, Max Strong. And Strong is a little short of the first down by about two. So that penalty proves costly. It was third and 15. It'll be fourth and two. Carter makes the tackle. Tom Ruin comes in to punt. And Hasselbeck had plenty of time that time and again because uh, Pittsburgh just rushed three but then made him throw into eight and everyone went deep they had twin safeties deep and they had everyone off and made him throw that short one and then come up make the tackle and make him punt. Tom Ruins fifth punt of the game. 
Antoine Randall always a threat to break one. Back to receive it. Two hopper. Randall from the 16 and the former Indiana quarterback stays in bounds and brings it back out to the 36 yard line where he's tackled by Isaiah Kazavinsky. You know, with Randall L returning that punt, don't you feel that there's another gadget play coming up here someplace on this drive, especially if they get a first down here? Yeah, they're due for one. I think they'd like to be a little bit closer to the middle of the field. They'd like to be in that alumni area between the 40. <laughs> And that pass is incomplete. And the coverage is good on the second tight end, Jeremy Tooman, to Tupu with the coverage. Second and ten. Roethlisberger steps up to avoid the pressure. He's going to take off of it. And he is going to be thrust out of bounds by Dee, Dee Lewis in front of the Pittsburgh bench up at about the 45 yard line. Dee, Dee Lewis. At 241 pounds and Roethlisberger at 241. Yeah, but that's that's one that you don't want. I know it's a Super Bowl and it's it's a second half and it's all or nothing. But you hate to see your quarterback take on anyone with his passing shoulder. I mean, if he wants to turn and try and take it on with his left, okay. I think he has to put this ball in his left hand and just got to get out of bounds because he's going to get knocked out of bounds anyway. And before this game is over, you're going to need his arm. He is a tough cat, but don't forget he missed action during the season. Twice he hurt his right knee, once his left knee, playing with a, a thumb, hairline fracture of that. And Roethlisberger, after pump faking, throws for Ward, and that is incomplete. So the Seattle defense in the last two Pittsburgh series has done the job, and they'll punt again. They're talking about Ben Roethlisberger. You see him playing with the glove. He tried to, or he did play with the glove last year, and everyone got on him. Anytime he'd have a bad day, you'd say it's a glove. This year he has a fracture and a chip in that thumb and he has a brace on underneath there so he needs to wear the glove to hold the brace on the fractured thumb. And you talked about you don't want to see a quarterback doing that. I don't know exactly what happened but when you saw Ben Ben bend over something happened on that play. Fourth down and two with Gardaki to punt. Remember Mark Bulger when he did that sure. he worked on a block with his right shoulder. Just about ended his season too against Indianapolis. And that kick is going to get down inside the five yard line. So the Steelers will back Seattle up to its own two and a half with 241 to play in the third. Roethlisberger putting his shirt back in. Well, it's the end of the third quarter. The crowd is close to the players, and Alexander gives them a little bit of breathing space. Farrier makes the tackle. It's a gain of five. It'll be second and five of the seven. Yeah, we get here towards the end of the third quarter and you start feeling that finality. I mean, there's no way that anyone's going to get down now. I mean, you may get hurt, but you're not going to get down. I mean, this is where adrenaline comes. Everything you have, your whole season it boils down to this. Everyone knows the winners. They forget the losers. And a few legacies as well. And Hasselback's going to take off and he's going to run for a first down as he's up to the 16-yard line. Play fake. Out in the flat. Caught. Short gain, and then the, it's over. There's no fumble there. Ryan Hannum, the second tight end. Ball whistled dead before it came out. Well, this has to be an idea that Mike Holmgren has now that he wants to bootleg because on the on the first down play, he bootlegged. On the third down play, he bootlegged to the right. Then he comes right back with another bootleg. See, both, both backs go to the right. And you see Hasselbeck bootlegs out here to his left. So, he bootlegged right and then came right back with another bootleg this time to the left. Second down and seven. Hasselbeck throws and that is going to be caught for a first down as Ryan Hannum again makes the catch and wrestles it away from Larry Foote to move the chains. Ryan Hannum is the, is the second tight end for the Seahawks and he's a guy that's usually in there for blocking. You know Jeremy Stevens is a you know pretty good receiver tall guy not a good blocker. Ryan Hannum is a good blocker. From the 27. Pass throw on the run, making the catch. Bobby Ingram gets it out close to midfield at the 48 yard line. Hasselback looking over to the bench. They can lock, let the clock run out to end the period and turn it around. And that's what will probably, well, I was going to say be the case, but now Hasselback's going to huddle up here and they. 
will attempt to run off one more play before the end of the third quarter. And that will be a pass to the left side that is incomplete, and that will do it. I want some. You've got Clark Hagens back in the game now. And the fourth quarter starts with an Alexander run as he slants off the left side and takes the ball to the 46-yard line. I want to see one of the reasons that you can't run inside, and you see the guy right there, number 98, is Casey Hampton. I mean, he is so good inside, and then he's pretty good running down the line of scrimmage. In fact, he makes a tackle, but watch him here, and, and he is so big and strong, and there's no way that if you don't get into him and get him cut, that he's not going to make the play. Third down and five from the 47-yard line. Hasselbeck look left, goes right, picks up the first down. Bobby Ingram, big catch, and is taken down at the 30-yard line by Ike Taylor. Big third down conversion. That was Bunch out there, and that was all Matt Hasselbeck. I mean, he had, he had good pass protection, and that was about his third read. I mean, he's going he's gonna to come. Watch it. Here's the bunch up here, so he knows that he has three wide receivers out there. He has the short guy, a medium guy, and a deep guy, and they drop off and leave the short guy wide open. Hasselbeck looked deep and then came back to short. They've already moved 68 yards on this drive, and a few more here as Alexander comes off a max strong block to pick up about seven yards. The largest deficit ever overcome to win a Super Bowl, Washington against Denver back in San Diego in Super Bowl 22. Denver led 10-0 in the end of the quarter, and by halftime it was 34-10. The Giants against Buffalo in the game in which Norwood misses the field goal at the end. The Giants overcoming a nine-point deficit in that one. Yeah, I think if I were Seattle, and maybe they're doing it now, this was an official's timeout, I would go to that up-tempo thing that they started in the game with. Seattle was down by 11, and right now they've got another first down as Alexander is over the left side. There's Paul Amalo. It's so interesting because the stars, the defensive stars, it's Paul Amalo 43 and Porter 55. They've been in some of the action, and of course sometimes, you know, the, you take people out of the game, but whatever Seattle is doing in this regard, John, neither guy has been that big a factor today. No, and they've been they've been trying to stay away from Paul Amalo. I mean, some of their their, their, their plays are adjusted to where he lines up, and it's the same thing with Joey Porter. They're always going to have blockers on him, not let him have a free edge. Seattle pressing the pace, and the pass is caught over the middle, and that's Jeremy Stevens who takes the ball to the one-yard line. So the tight end, and what a day he's had, but there's a flag down. A flag and holding. holding. Number 75 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's the right tackle that Sean Locklear holding that time yeah, holding he was, Clark Hagens. He was holding Clark Hagens. Hagens came back in and you're going to see him rush from the outside here. Lockler makes a pretty good move with that right arm. Oh, I didn't see holding. I mean, you have to be able to jam up in there. And uh, yeah, there may have been holding, but it wasn't in that picture. I and mean, Sean Lockler wasn't really bad on that play. Holding is a call, as we know, John, that's not always seen. Well, they always <laughs> say that, you know, you can call holding on any play, but what we saw there, I did not see holding. Would have been at the 1 and said it's at the 29, and it's first down and 20. Hasselback under pressure, gets spun down, and that's Casey Hampton. And John talking about Casey Hampton, and Hampton is able to burst through and put the pressure on and create a huge sack. So from the 1-yard line after the penalty and the sack, they're all the way back now. Yeah, and here's Casey Hampton here, and you're talking about a 330-pound guy that when, when he gets a push-up, look how strong he is. He took the center, Robbie Toback, and with one arm, his left arm, he just pushed him right to the ground and then ran right up to Hasselbeck. How unusual is that? The last time Hampton had a sack, it was early in the 2003 season. Regular or post. Second down and 25. The ball is at the 34. On the ground now, Alexander sprints to the outside. And Alexander gets collared at the 26-yard line by Joey Porter. And you just have the feeling we we're talking about Joey Porter not making a lot of plays today that when, when Alexander started to get the outside, didn't you just feel that Porter was going to catch him? I mean, you, and I know that Alexander was determined to get to the outside, and Porter was equally as determined. Right here, 55, equally as determined or more determined to catch him, and he did. 
Because Alexander has speed. I mean, he's not a he's not just a great running back with average speed. He has good speed. Close to a horse, Donald, but no call. Third down and 18. Hasselback throwing, and it's intercepted at the five-yard line by Ike Taylor. And Ike Taylor is brought back to the 28-yard line where he's tackled by Matt Hasselback. And a flag comes in at the end of that play. Dude, when that flag came in, though, that's not going to affect the interception. No. That'll be post-possession. Post-possession foul at the end of the play, right in front of the Pittsburgh bench. Personal foul. Block below the waist. Number eight of the passing team. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's Hasselback. Interestingly, that's Tony Carrenti there in the uh, the warm-up jacket with the uh, zebra stripes underneath. He would be the backup referee. Now, here's the deal on this play. We think it's a bad call. If Hasselback is making a tackle, he can go low. If you go low on a blocker, and the call was that he went low on 26 Townsend, that was a cut. And that's why they argued the call to no avail. Can't review something like that. The ball's at the 44, and Parker takes it up to the 46-yard line. So it's kind of like insult injury at that particular point. You have the interception after you thought you were down at the one-yard line in the pass to Stevens, the penalty, the pick, the penalty, and now Pittsburgh with 10-and-a-half has it near midfield. Yeah, and that was one of the things the officials thought they saw something they didn't see, and that was Matt Hasselbeck just making a pretty good play in a tackle. And getting penalized for it. Again, if you cut a blocker low, that's a penalty. But that time, he, he made the tackle low. And that's legal. Second down and nine at the 45-yard line. He's swinging out to the left side. This is Randall L. Randall L. with a little bit of a convoy. Picks up about six or seven yards on the play. Pruitt makes the tackle. And that's going to set up a third down and two. Yeah, you know, they just try and get the ball to Randall L. in the open field and let him run with it. That was a wide receiver screen. You know, most of the times we see a screen pass, it's usually a back coming out of the backfield. That was where he comes back quickly, throws it out to Randall L., and the line pulls and gets in front of him on a screen. At the 48, Dyson back in defensively for Seattle. At one cornerback spot. Roethlisberger out of the shotgun. He's going to run it. He's going to run for a first down to the 42-yard line. Design play, John? Uh, yes, I would, I, would, I would say that that was a design play because he didn't look very long. And we'll look at it from Skycam. We'll see what he sees. You see, he comes back, and he sees right now, he sees a lane here, and he also has a lane here. So he's definitely going to run that thing and know that he can get a first down. So he took the lane to the right and then cut back to the lane to the left. Pretty good running. At the 43. Little toss. Here comes a gadget play. Randall L. He can throw. He was a quarterback in college. And he's thrown a touchdown to Hines Ward in the Super Bowl. Forty-three yards, and sooner or later, they're going to run a gadget. And you know it's coming in this alumni area that I said is between the 40s, and you know that Randall L. is going to be involved in it. It starts off in a reverse. He comes around, and it becomes a reverse pass, and he throws a perfect pass to Hines Ward. Look at him. They're starting a bunch, and then he comes here. Hines Ward coming all the way across the field. Randall L. getting the ball out in front for him. But you know that they're going to do it. You know that Randall L. is going to be the guy, and they're usually going to do it around midfield. Randall L. in his career in regular season play 14 of 16 passing, 3 for 3 this year. Now Reed for the point after, and all of a sudden when it looked like Seattle's going in to take the lead, back come the Steelers. Dinner's not my strong suit. has run the emotional gamut today. Mike Holmgren barking to himself after it appeared his team was moving into position to take the lead. Bill Tower, in effect, breathing a figurative sigh of relief. The interception down the field they go, and you've just watched the first touchdown pass ever thrown by a wide receiver in a Super Bowl game. 
If you had to guess what wide receiver would probably throw one, you would guess Randall L, wouldn't you? Absolutely. They, they really took advantage of Pruitt, the backup safety in there. I mean, he bit on that reverse. Well, they're paying for that injury to Manuel earlier. He would have been the starter. Scobie brings it back up to the 17 yard line and you'll see what we're talking about with Pruitt playing in the spot normally occupied by Manuel on the touchdown. Well, the first thing is you're going to see Ben Roethlisberger pitch and then come back and make a block right there. That's pretty good. I was talking about don't use your right shoulder but if you get a touchdown maybe that's OK too. <laughs> They started with a, a bunch. Randall L started over there on the same side as Heinz Ward. From the 16, first down, Hasselbeck. A lot of time, but the secondary does its work, and thus the pass has to be thrown out of bounds to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Al, Randall L told me before the game that if there was going to be a gadget play in this game, it was going to be that reverse pass. They hadn't used it ever. They wanted to use it. It was in the game plan, and of course they did. But before that touchdown, before the Casey Hampton sack, before the Ike Taylor interception, this bench was down. You could read it in the body language of everyone from Roethlisberger to Bettis. <laughs> this bench is completely enlivened now, Al. Absolutely. They went from maybe being down by three to being up by 11 again. Clock is their friend at 8:41, and that's why Bill Cower loves those gadget plays because it does change momentum. Hasselbeck, and he's going to run for a first down, and Hasselbeck's going to make the most of it, and then Hasselbeck loses the ball at the 35-yard line, and the question is, was he down? And they're going to say no, at least for the moment, and recovered by Polamalu. The question is, was he contacted? All he did was fall down. If he just fell down and wasn't contacted, it's a fumble. Not down by contact. It is a fumble. First down, Pittsburgh. That's when the ground, that's the one instance when the ground can cause a fumble. When you're not contacted. Now you saw that foot actually might have gotten a little bit of his jersey. Hasselbeck goes down, but the ground at that point, yes. Now, was he touched by 50? You see that on that view, the, the official obscures it. But if they want to review this, the question is, was he contacted? Yes, look at this. Yeah, I think Mike Holmgren, uh, I mean, he just challenged. I was just going to say. And you'll see in a second, Levy's going to make the call here. After reviewing the play, the runner was touched by number 50 of the defense prior to going down. It'll be first and 10 on the 34-yard line. Seattle has not charged a timeout. And that's all that needed to, to have happen for foot foot touched him and then at the end of the play will be watch Hasselbeck's left elbow there's the contact he still has possession of the ball when does he lose possession he loses possession after the left elbow hits the ground the second the left elbow hits the ground end of play right and the big thing I think was the down by contact the contact to Larry foot I think when they when they first rolled a fumble they probably didn't see that Larry foot had contact with Hasselbeck. So an 18-yard gain by Hasselbeck. Seattle still breathes. They're at the 34-yard line with 8-11 to go. And now Alexander. Before tough yards up to the 38-yard line, Casey Hampton makes the tackle. The clock will tick down under eight. I think that Seattle, you know, has to get into that up tempo again. Now usually. When you need two scores, you go to a hurry up at four minutes. So if you need one score, you have a hurry up at two minutes. Two scores, you have a hurry up at four minutes. But at seven minutes, 39 seconds, I think I would at least go to up tempo. Looking ahead all their time now, plus the two minute warning. Here's Jerry Vicious making the catch. And Jerry Vicious dislodging the helmet of the Pittsburgh defender, Townsend, picks up a first down at midfield at the 50 yard line. Now this is one of those basketball things. Always try and get everything over to the other side. Get Juravicious back here by himself. And again with his big body just get the ball out to him. Away from the other guys. Get him to rotate one way. And come back to this side to Juravicious. First and ten at the 50 yard line. Hassel back going deep down the left side. And the coverage is right there again. It's the Juravicious. The Shea Townsend combination second down. And you get the isolate back here. They had the two receivers over on the other side. Juravicious back here in the and the first one they worked a shorter pattern 
And then they saw that they had something. They had single coverage there, so they came back to the deep one. In that matchup, Jurovicius with a seven-inch advantage of 6-5 to 5-10. Second down and 10. And he's tired. He just took himself out. And like I say, I think, I think, I mean, the clock has stopped here, but I still think they've got to get the up-tempo for the Steeler defense. And Seneca Wallace is in the game. Remember, he's the backup quarterback who caught a pass in the championship game. But they use him as a decoy, and they flip it out to Alexander, and he gets taken down from behind on a nice tackle by Chris Polk. The backup nose tackle. And Seneca Wallace is going out now. That's interesting because I know they do have some plays. They have a package of three or four plays for Seneca Wallace other than quarterback. And, and, and one of them is a reverse. He made that big catch early in the game against Carolina. Third down and eight. The guy they haven't gone to is Jackson who had five catches in the first quarter and none since. Well, they, they kind of got away from that, hitting that short pass, that quick stuff in front of them. Third and eight, under pressure in the sack. The big sack by Deshae Townsend, the corner who comes up from the left side, almost through the middle. You never know where the defensive coordinator, Dick LeBeau, will put the heat on from. And that was an overload blitz, and that's, that's exactly right. Matt Hasselbeck said, you know, that he has to not know who's coming, but know who's not coming. Well, in this case, you better know who's coming, too, because the, the Shea Townsend just runs in there free. And, and, and he looks, but he was going to throw to the right. He turns to his right, and boom, there's number 26. Compelled to punt now. Ruined to punt it to Randall L. Three sacks of Hasselback today. One by a lineman, one by a linebacker, and now one by a defensive back. And that one goes into the end zone. Yeah, you look at Pittsburgh offensively, Al, and, and they're winning 21 to... To them, but it's just some big. I mean, Roethlisberger had a big play in the scramble. Parker's long TD run and Randall L's pass, reverse pass. And each team with a big interception. Jerome Bettis gets stopped at the 18 yard line. Chuck Darby is the first guy there. Now, looking ahead, of course, it would, it would be very beneficial to Seattle stopping three and out here, conserve their timeouts. It's a two possession game. Seattle has all of its timeouts plus the two minute warning so they can stop it in effect four times. I see Bill Coward down there with his arms folded again and I <laughs> I can't see them throwing here now that doesn't mean they won't I mean they you know, it would it could be a backbreaker if they could you know, you'll get a completed pass and get a first down but just knowing Bill Cower, this this is a rundown and a run situation for him. That is not a red hour back victory cigar with the arms folded in this situation. Bettis chugs. Roethlisberger repositioning Randall L. Fakes to Haynes. Then a little dump off. Randall L. And Randall L. will pick up a very important first down. Because that's going to use more of the clock. The ball comes loose at the end of the play. That's out. There could be a foreign object down there. <laughs> it's always the umpire. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I mean, the umpire is usually the biggest, strongest, toughest guy. But it's always the umpire that when there's a pile, he'll dive in on it. This is going to be a shotgun play, and, and they're going to fake a reverse and then come on and, and just hit a little dump pass. I think this is about as safe a pass as you can have. And a monster first down, because now Pittsburgh can chew up the clock and force the Seahawks to take their timeouts. We took down to four minutes. Then will milk the clock. He gives it to Bettis. Second down and six now for the Seattle timeout. The ball is at the 35-yard line. Bettis. And again, that, that's the position you're in right now. You, you have to take a timeout, but Pittsburgh has made it third down and short. So you force Seattle to use the two timeouts. Now if you pick up the first down, you're almost home. Not quite, but almost. Well, well, you're getting very, very close, and you're and you're putting you can see Mike Holmgren just getting that feeling now that, you know, we have to stop him here. I mean, if if we don't, then, like you say, you're very, very close to being home. That is the fake to him. Roethlisberger is going to run with it, and he's going to pick up the first down. Pruitt says, no, he didn't make it. But here comes the line judge, and he's going to put the ball just across the yellow line. Levy may measure, but it appears that Pittsburgh has a first down. Yeah, that was the play there. I mean, they're not going to throw the ball. They're either going to hand it to Jerome Bettis or they're going to 
fake it to Bettis and have them. In fact, that could have been a broken play. Ooh. But they're going to fake to him and just bootleg him. And those are the two things you do is either give it to Bettis or fake it to Bettis and, you know, and keep it out here yourself like Roethlisberger did. Roethlisberger has made some big runs in postseason. None bigger than that one. That one was a, a backbreaker. You know, we're on the 40 yard line. You know, I was talking about the alumni area between the 40s. That's an old college term. You know, when the alumni say, hey, you have to do this, you have to run reverse, you have to do this, you have to pass more, you would always do them between the 40s. You'd never do them, you know, when you were going in or where you're coming out. Like, and there's Bill Cowher. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like, 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 Red, like Red Cashin came out of retirement, first down. Yeah. Well, and that was a that was a big, big first down. That's a that's a Super Bowl winning first down. It, it's a little unusual to see a coach whose team against Indianapolis almost coughed up a game that was not to be believed with that big of a smile and still 320 on the clock. That thought just went through my <laughs> mind too and I'm sure between now and the end of the game it's going to go through Bill Cowher's mind. Right, he'll grit his teeth again pretty soon. First and 10 at the 41 yard line. Here's Jerome. Seattle can only stop the clock with one more timeout plus the two minute warning. They have to use it here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's an old defensive guy and special yep. teams guy, Coward. You know, like some guys celebrate, you pat someone on the back, you pat them on the head, and he just grabs them by the chest and yep. <laughs> just throws them. You know, that's, that's, that's a celebration. Everything but a head slap. On second and eight, here's Bettis. Roethlisberger attempted to become the youngest quarterback to win a Super Bowl. He got a lot of advice this week from Dan Marino. He played, of course, with the Dolphins, but is a, a Pittsburgher. One of the things Marino told him, he said, Soak in every second. Enjoy everything. And of course, Dan would know better than anybody his spectacular career, but he only got to the Super Bowl once in his second year, as does Roethlisberger. Right, and, and that's what he wants him to know that, you know, don't think that this is going to be an annual deal for you. I mean, you, you know, you're here now. Make the most of it. Enjoy it. But win the game. Believe me, getting to the Super Bowl is one thing. Winning the Super Bowl is what you have to do. Third down and eight. Here's Bettis. He will not get the first down, so this will take us to the two-minute warning, and Seattle's going to get the ball back. It'll be fourth down. They will, after the two-minute warning, punt, but Seattle's going to need 11 points without a timeout in 120 seconds. Said earlier, long career for Chris. Never had a punt block. In 15 years in the league. And it won't happen tonight either. And it bounces into the end zone. First and 10, the ball is at the 20 yard line. Steelers rush four. Hasselback throws over the middle, which is not where you really want to throw it here if you don't have to. And Jeremy Stevens makes the catch, and the clock's going to keep running. See, the one thing, you, you know, if you can throw it over the middle, you got to get your guys back, though. But if you can throw it over the middle and get first yeah. downs, then you can come up and spike it. Oof, but boy. if you're short of the first down, then, then you get fouled up. Yeah, second down and four, Hassel back. And that one's going to go over the middle. And wide open is Jared Vicious, and he's going to get taken. No, he's not going to get taken down initially, as Chris Hall couldn't knock him down. Now they're going to race up to the 39-yard line. Again, if you can pick up about 10 or 12 yards here, you... you Kick the field goal, and then you have the onside kick. First and ten. Hasselbeck. Stepping up. Looking. Slings it to the outside. That'll stop the clock. Throws it away. 60 seconds to go. I wonder if Mike Holmgren is thinking that way. That the, you know, I would probably take one more play. If I got in field goal range, I think I would take, I would take one shot for the end zone and then kick the field goal. So I'd, I'd try and you know, be a little hoggy about it and, you know, try and get both. But I think, I think your idea, right, you know, is get in field goal range now and then, as you say, kick a field goal, or as I would say, you know, get in field goal range, take a shot, then kick a field goal. Right. Josh Brown, good field goal kicker. Second down and 10, ball at the 40-yard line. Hasselbeck stepping up, looking, slings it to the outside, and he had the open man there. It was strong. It was probably the fourth guy 
on the uh, food chain at that point as you just try to dump it off. And it will be eight more seconds that are used on the clock and sets up a third down and ten. And there's no tougher throw than that than the fourth guy in the food chain <laughs> being all the way across the field. When you're in the left side of the field, he's on the right side. That's you're not going to complete that. That's about a ten percenter. Yeah. And not the final minute of the Super Bowl either. No. Third down and ten. There they go. Towers waving. Here comes Palomalo. Got a hand on him, but the pass is thrown and it is incomplete. And there's no flag, and now it's going to be fourth down. And it will come down to this for the Seahawks to try to stay in the game. For Mike Holmgren, he came very close to stepping aside after last year. He walked into Paul Allen's house, the owner of the team. He said, you know what? I might not be the right guy for the job. If Allen said you're not, he would have left. But Allen said, think about it a little bit more. And there is the owner of the Seahawks. And he changed a lot of people in the organization. Holmgren said he's never had as much fun as he had this year. Fourth down and ten. Hasselbeck stepping up. Needs the first. Has it to the 24-yard line. That's Ingram. Now, do you kick a 42-yard field goal? The starters are going to down it here to stop the clock. Okay, 30 four seconds and I think I think you take one shot one shot here at the end zone if you don't get it, I think you kick the field goal in the next down but as you say you can't spend all your time now trying to get this score and not have time for the onside kick in the next drive right you take a shot but if you're gonna sh it's gotta be I think to the outside or the end zone if, you, if you're gonna fool around over the middle that's gonna kill a lot of a lot of time you will have to spike it and then you're down to almost nothing they have a play to Daryl Jackson down here that uh, if the Steelers are off so it's going to be tough to get. That's what he's trying to get to. To the outside and that's about the last thing you want to do and it's incomplete which is a break for them because at least that stops the clock. Tyrone Carter with the coverage. Yeah you have to kick the field goal right now. If not you're just going to die trying here. Pittsburgh not letting them take the kind of shot they wanted to. No, they had Daryl Jackson down here in the bottom, and they were going to take a shot to him on the left, but the Steelers were playing way off on him, and he couldn't even get to the to the defender, Ike Taylor. Third down and ten. Bill Cower ending his 14th season, looking for his first Super Bowl win. Three-man rush to the outside they go, and staying in bounds. Carter made the tackle on Stevens and he stays in bounds and now there's really nothing left to do. You can't spike it. It's fourth down. Where they finish the oh game boy. the way they finish the half. Absolutely. And the pass over the middle and that's Stevens and he's going to drop that one and that's going to write an end to it. And you're exactly right John. The first half was a mess at the end. The end of this drive was a mess. For but, Seattle's offense. But how about Bill Cower? You talk about coaches, and I said earlier his yeah, but yeah, but he hasn't won the big one. Yeah, but he hasn't won the Super Bowl. He's won it today. You bet. His daughters are there, and that's always been the thing. You're right, John. It's that whole, it's that yeah, but thing. You know, his wife Kay. Bill Cower, you know, great coach, a lot of wins, titles. Gets to the Super Bowl, but now he's going to hoist the Lombardi Trophy. And I'll tell you, you know, you know, you look at his daughters and you look at his wife down there. They live that too. They live with that. Can't win the big one. You always go to Hawaii. You know, you're always coaching the Pro Bowl. You're never in the Super Bowl. And then you have to just kind of stay there and take it. But I'll tell you, they'll never be able to say that about Bill Cowher again. And what a, what a run! As they'll end it on a kneel down, Polamalu will be the safety valve here. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, 7 and 5. And wouldn't have made the playoffs two months ago. Run the entire table with eight wins, regular and post. All of them in postseason on the road. Bill Cower was saying that he wanted to get this one to give owner Dan Rooney his fifth Super Bowl ring. He did that. And finally, finally, after those four Super Bowl wins in the 70s, one of the great dynasties in the history of sports, they finally, in 2005, the 2005 season, on February 5th, 2006, 
They finally get the one for the thumb. I'm already.